Documentary Filmmaking 101. So this video is uh, an introduction to documentary filmmaking. I am in no way, shape or form qualified to talk about this, but I just want to share my experiences as documentary filmmaking has been a big part of my life for the past four years. So in a nutshell, documentary filmmaking is very run and gun style. It doesn't really follow any of the traditional rules of filmmaking. So if you're looking to getting into it, uh, think of all the things that you've learned about filmmaking and throw it out the window because the rules just don't exist at all. Obviously the stock standard uh, aperture and shutter speed, white balance, all that stuff uh, applies, but it's more of like the on-set experience that doesn't really translate well in documentary filmmaking. For example, if you mess up a shot or something on set, it's fine. You just like put everything back together and do another take. In a documentary world, uh, that does not really exist at all. There's many times where I've missed shots. It has happened to pretty much every documentary filmmaker I know, so it's good to know that I'm not alone in that. So I'm going to talk about the documentary that is the most released one that I have, which is called uh, The Road to Chemical Miracle. Uh, it is with the band uh, Trophy Eyes, who I work for. And the story of the documentary basically follows the band's life on the road, on tour, right before their new album is released. So uh, this documentary that I worked on is part two prologue, I guess you could say, uh, for the band series that we're working on. I did a uh, old documentary uh, on Vans Warp Tour in 2015 where you got to know more about uh, the band personally and their names and what they do and things like that. But in The Road to Chemical Miracle, we see more about the band's lives uh, before the album gets released, uh, their feelings towards it, what they want the results to be of it, and talking a lot about how much it has changed uh, since their first record. This uh, documentary was all shot in America. It was on a tour with a band called The Amity Affliction. I guess the uh, main thing that I learned in this experience with the documentary was always try and prepare for as much as you can. There were a lot of shots missed and things like that because my camera was packed away and now that I roll with the Sony FS7, which I'm shooting this on now, it takes a lot more to set up. So the shots that you might want to get really spontaneously, they can be missed like that. So I've learned to always have the gear in my hands, ready to go in case something happens. Audio was a really big part of it. I really wish we had more time for that. Uh, there were parts in the documentary where I just wasn't happy with the interviews just because of the environment that we were in. And I felt like the documentary lacked a bit of context uh, because we didn't get enough time to do the interviews. So now I want to move on to the uh, current documentaries I'm working on. I'm still uh, working with Trophy Eyes. We are working on a, a documentary from their current world tour, I guess you could say. I can't really give away much at this point in terms of details, but I've finally started getting a better idea of what I want the documentary to be about. And the current challenge I'm facing is going through a year's worth of footage and compiling, breaking it down to a, a smaller documentary. Uh, another thing that I learned um, while doing this documentary is lighting is really important and location and settings. Because we were really rushed for the interviews, I didn't get a chance to get the right setting through like location scouting and trying to test the audio levels. Uh, there's parts of the interviews where like a phone's going off or you can hear a band uh, like sound checking in the background. And that was probably the most uh, challenging part, but it, again, huge learning curve. So here are three helpful tools. The big challenge that you face while doing documentary filmmaking is trying to find space for everything, especially when you're traveling with the band. Um, you're the optional crew member, essentially. They don't need a filmmaker to be there. So you have to respect their space as much as possible. So I fit all my gear into a Think Tank backpack. I did a previous video of all my gear and how it fits in my bag. You can see that below, but I'll be redoing that video soon as I've gotten more gear. So the first and most important tool for documentary filmmaking is audio. There's all sorts of different audio to help get the best sound out of an interview. You have your boom microphones and your lav mics and then you condense the microphones on the camera like this one right here. For me, I personally think the condenser microphone on the camera and then a lav mic like this is perfect. This is a, a Rode 
smart lav microphone. Here's the lav mic here, it just attaches on to any bit of the clothing. And then this bit plugs into your iPhone where you download the app, I think it's like five or ten dollars, and you get really good audio out of it. This costs about uh, 60 Australian dollars, and you can get it pretty much at any camera store around the country. Reasons why I think this is so beneficial is because it does plug straight into your phone, open the app, boom, can start recording. Saves a lot of hassle uh, trying to set up a lav mic that has like a wireless receiver on the, on the camera and things like that. And it's really cost effective as well. Like if you break your wireless pack while you're on the road, that's a really big expense. Whereas if you just have one of these bad boys, only $50 or so, you can pick it up pretty much anywhere. The next tip for filmmaking is a lighting. First bit of lighting gear, which is really important, would be a reflector if you're shooting in daylight conditions. Again, because you need something that's really portable, you don't want to take up too much space, one of these is perfect. As you can tell, it's not so big, compact in this little bag, and can just go in your luggage and get thrown around, and it, it goes pretty good so far. So I'm not going to open this because it'll probably destroy everything on my desk at the moment. This expands perfectly to like a one person or a two person interview. You have uh, your white reflector side and your gold reflected side. Uh, gold is perfect if you want like a warmer look on the face uh, and white's just good for like a, just a general bounce to have. I personally prefer uh, the wider side uh, only because with the gold Sometimes the light reflects a bit weirdly and you get like too strong of like a gold uh, glaze on the people's face, especially if they're wearing glasses. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to open this, but as you can tell by this little zip, this opens completely into a diffusion, which is perfect if you're shooting in uh, daylight conditions and the sun is coming right down like harshly on the face and you kind of want to soften it up a little bit. Another great little tool is like a small LED panel like this. Uh, this diffusion on top is courtesy of baking paper, which you can get at any store. You can pretty much use any form of white paper to help you uh, soften and, and diffuse this light. And as you can tell, it is just like an extra little boost for light and you can angle it as well to get some nice shadows along the face. And the best part is if you're in an indoor situation and the lighting is not the greatest, you can rig this light somewhere and then get this reflector as well and bounce the light off each other. Those two items are really great and compact so you don't have to worry about messing around with uh, big LED panels and things like that. I could go in depth more about the camera gear use for documentary filmmaking but I honestly think that's just personal preference. For me personally I prefer just to shoot on the 35mm like I am right now. I think it's perfect depth to get everything you need. Some people prefer zoom lenses um, other than prime lenses, and that's all right. It all really comes down to personal preference, what you think is going to look good uh, for the documentary. And the last tip I want to talk about, which is kind of like the first tip, is uh, really prepare as much as you can for the shoot. So if you have time to go and uh, location scout for interviews, uh, take advantage of that time as much as you can. Or if you're traveling a lot like I am and you need b-roll footage, you can always go on Google Earth and have a look at spots around where you are to scout out um, the shots that you might need. You know, they might be nature shots or urban shots. Just take 10 minutes or so every day to really sit down and think, all right, what can I shoot around here that's going to benefit the documentary? Some days you might have nothing and then some days you might have a lot. It really depends on where you are. So those are my uh, documentary tips and tricks. I hope you learned something from this. If you have any suggestions or questions, please put them down below and I will answer them. Thanks for checking this video out. If you wanna see more, please subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.